Ladies and galactic hyperspace types, so tonight we have for you, and I, do you know what I have wanted? I have wanted one of these on the books for longer than I can tell you. And oh my, this is not a disappointment by any stretch. In fact, probably one of the most playable, playable uh, Gibsons that I've come across. It's, this thing is so easy. So let's have a listen uh, to a noisy tune, then we'll listen to the pickups, and then I shall tell you what I can about it. So let's go!
Composition for the Gibson that sounds most like a Gibson because mm, it does. Okay, moving on. Can you honestly, can you honestly, I mean, look at the damn thing, can you honestly believe that these were introduced in 1958? I've got to tell you, you but if you're buying uh, alongside the uh, flying V and uh, another couple of futuristic uh, looking guitars, can you honestly believe that these were? introduced in 1958. I mean, good lordy dordy. That is, I think, quite amazing. And this guitar, these guitars, let me tell you, they are not, they are not expensive for what they give you. So let's have a little look through it from stem to stern. So first of all, we've got that hockey stick headstock there with a proper uh, Mother of Pearl Gibson logo inlay. Uh, you've got 22 frets, uh, the usual Gibson scale length. The neck and body are both mahogany. You have a set neck, of course, round here at the back. I think that they're, are they, um, I think they could, are they Grovers? I think they're Grovers, I can't tell. I should look, shouldn't I? Well, they look like mini Grovers to me. Uh, anyway, uh, that you've got a rosewood fretboard with a disappointingly acrylic dot inlays and but what I've got to tell you is is that the, honestly this is very probably the easiest guitar I've ever played it's just it's just as smooth as silk or butter or other things that are smooth and so uh, yes uh, rosewood as I said a uh, rosewood fingerboard and you've got these fabulous which apparently are about the nearest to a PAF you'll get the BB2 that's burst booker 2 and burst booker 3 in the neck and bridge positions respectively tunematic bridge ABR style and that uh, traditional uh, Gibson stop tail. This one is in the antique um, finish and you've got two volumes and one tone control and I'll, and I'll tell you something else these are abs they are perfectly perfectly balanced. Uh, there's no neck droop there's no and that and I'll be honest with you when I had that oh, what's that one I had that big thing at uh, the th uh, not Thunderbird, the Firebird. I thought that this was going to feel a bit like that Firebird. Really, I mean, they are very, they have a great physical presence, the Firebird. They are humongous guitars. They're enormous behemoths. And uh, this ain't. Uh, this is just really, really, really easy, easy, easy to play. Very, very comfortable. Very, very slick. The action is... Oh, people do this, don't they, when they want to get something in focus. Uh, the action is so... It's so, it's less than 1.25. And, uh, it, and it just... And it really, really just plays so very, very easily. For whatever you're playing, either if you're playing down here or... And also, uh, remarkably, what did surprise me, is that the access to fret 22 is surprisingly easy. So, great for you people who are right up there at the top. Um, there's, you know, it's the same finish uh, all over. You've got your cavity control plate that gives you access to your uh, volume and tone controls. Uh, that everything else is mounted on, well, when I say everything else is mounted on the scratch plate, uh, the toggle switch is mounted on the scratch plate. Uh, so that really is kind of it for the guitar. I'll let you have a look at the serial number, if I can get it the right way around. Hmm. 
so it's this way. There you go. If you, I'll hold that still for a few seconds, and then hopefully you can see all the details on there. Mm -hmm. So I, put, I will tell you a little something else about why I do. Now, as you know, when I get something through the post, I always, always, always do an unboxing on the camera so that if there are any issues, and I really, really do advise this. The other thing that I haven't told you is that what I also do, I mean, I restring everything because it's easy and it's sensible. So the other thing that I do is that when I do the restring, I always take the pickups out to have a look on the back to make sure that I am getting what I was told I was getting. And that is, I don't show you that because it's boring. Uh, and so that's what I always do because I have heard, it's never happened to me, but I have heard tales of people receiving a guitar such as this and uh, when they get it, there's a couple of Chinese knockoffs stuck in there, which would make one less than happy, I would assume. So uh, I would say that that's it from me and the Explorer, but I do want to show you the case. I, can't, I, I find it quite astonishing that you can buy one of these from JK or, or probably anywhere else as well, really, for 1500 quid. And for 1500 quid, not only do you get one of the best Gibsons that you can buy, but you get this as well. And that's why I've got this long seat here. Uh, for your 1500 quid, yeah, you do. You get that as well. Um, it is capacious, capacious to say the least. Uh, beautiful red for lining, and the and as I say, these come with the guitar. Massive cubby hole. Uh, you get a goodie bag with um, your baby photo. Uh, oh, the um, cert is in the other room. You get your warranty card. You get your uh, manual instruction thing. You even get. The tool, the Gibson Swiss Army Knife multi-tool with, uh, oh, oh, and, 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 if that was not enough, they give you a proper leather Gibson branded strap, which I think is brilliant. As it turns out, uh, with this one, I've even got the original bill of sale, which is rather nice. Uh, like I say, I do have the uh, COA, but that, I was just, you know, researching it in the other room. So I find, let's pop this in here. And there we go. Yeah, I mean, you know, custom designed for, the, I mean, look at that. I mean, if that is not a snug fit, I do know what it is. I reckon that you can send that across the world and there will never ever ever be an issue with it. So that is a terrific thing to have. I think that these, I think that they're probably the best value uh, Gibson considering that you also get a case that will What's the case going to cost? Got to be 150 quid, right? Something like that. And so I think that they represent amazing value for money, considering how well made they are, the stuff that they're made out of, and the way that they play. <sighs> Guitars really, you know, are very much in a way like fingerprints. There are no, there are no two that are exactly the same. The windings might be just slightly different on the pickups or the, the, you know, the way that they're put together might be just slightly different. But, you know, I, did, I travel all over the place to find really, really, really nice stuff. And that one is a belter. So that's it from me and the Gibson Explorer. Thanks ever so much for watching. It's been a joy seeing you as usual. And I've got a lovely cheeky midweeker for you. So uh, thanks all ever so much for watching. I'll see you soon. It's Adios Amigos and ta -ra.